Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire, Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. Yesterday, it emerged that Ricky Johnson, aka Ricky Priddy, 32, from Harrow, had been charged with GBH, dangerous driving, driving while disqualified, failing to stop and driving without insurance. On the afternoon of Wednesday, the 6th of November, a female Metropolitan Police officer was ran down so he'd actually used the car as a weapon to seriously injure a police officer which is a very serious offence and of course he's going to face some serious time. Ricky Preddy, his actual, that's his real name, his alias is Johnson. He's well known to the police and also the media as well. The case that he was involved in years ago upset the whole nation when Damalo Taylor was stabbed to death in Peckham while on his way back from the library it was 10 to 5 and the year was 2000 when Damalola was travelling home. He was seen on CCTV walking away, approaching the North Peckham estate. He received a gash to his left thigh, severing an artery. Staggering to a stairwell, he collapsed and bled to death approximately 30 minutes later. He was still alive when the ambulance arrived and he died on his way to hospital. Different forensic scientists have presented different versions of events to actually explain what Damalola's wounds and how there was a 14 year old girl was unreliable because they said that she was trying to do it to get some money for the reward money. The jury found the other two not guilty as well and questioned the reliability of the young witnesses and they presented evidence that said that Damalola had fallen onto a bottle and was not the victim of an attack. So that was the first trial for Taylor and nobody was convicted. Despite the setback new DNA techniques emerged and they identified Damalola's blood on the trainer of another boy. Not one of the first four suspects Daniel Preddy's trainer had Damalola's blood on it and on the sweatshirt cuff of his brother Richard Preddy. This led to a re-examination of the evidence obtained at the time of Damalola's death and this was in 2005 now so a lot of time has passed five years. Fresh arrests were made this time no charges of manslaughter. They arrested Hassan Jihad and the two Preddy brothers who were 16 and 17 at the time and they couldn't actually be named at that time. January the 23rd 2000 2006, they all go on trial for the death of Damalola Taylor. They appeared at the Old Bailey to face charges of manslaughter and assault before the start of their imminent trial. The trial commenced on the 24th of January and they got more witnesses to testify that Damalola had fell onto the glass shard. On the 29th of March, the jury returned the verdict. Jihad, the, the first person that was involved, the first lad, was cleared of all charges in relation to Damalola's death. The jury could not reach a verdict on the charges of manslaughter against the two brothers and they were set free, but they did still have the possibility of a retrial on those charges. On the 6th of April, the Crown Prosecution Service announced that the two would be retried again. So now we're into the third trial for Damalola's killers and there is still no closer as of yet as to getting a conviction. The retrial of the two brothers took place on the 23rd of June. There was both 18 by this time, so bear in mind there would have been 13, 12 at the time when Damalola was killed and they were named as Danny and Ricky Preddy from Peckham, South London. Both defendants were well known to the police with multiple robberies and offences. On the 9th of August, Ricky Preddy, who was born in 1987 and Daniel Charles Preddy, after a 33-day trial, were convicted of manslaughter of Damalola Taylor. During the retrial, it was noted that while the police did follow procedure collecting evidence, lapses occurred in the prosecution. On the 9th of October 2006, an Old Bailey judge sentenced the Preddy brothers to eight years in youth custody for manslaughter. Although it was widely reported in the media that Taylor's parents were unhappy that the sentences had not been longer, the judge said that he went to some great lengths to explain the factors that forced him to take this into account. He had to include the ages of the children at the time of the death, and there was no evidence to suggest that they had planned to kill Damalola. In addition, the weapon used had not been carried to the scene of the crime, but was found lying on the floor. Both brothers were set to be paroled in 2010 after serving their sentence. Ricky was released 
released on the 8th of September 2010, subject to probation, supervision, and also subject to recall as well, similar to what Jordan had. So if he breached any of the conditions of his behaviour, that he would no longer be able to remain in the community. Ricky was reported in 2010 to have gone to Peckham, where he was banned from. He couldn't go there. He couldn't associate with any gang members. He was then recalled because of that breach, and he was released again in 2012. He was again recalled for driving offences, and also seen with different members of, of a Peckham gang. And then in breach of his terms of his licence, Amalola Taylor's father said at the time that he called for a public inquiry into the handling of the case. Ricky Preddy was released again in July of 2012, but jailed again in December of 2013 for five months, following a high-speed chase on a motorbike. In 2007, he, he was jailed again for six weeks for more driving offences, and an additional four weeks for not appearing in court. And then with this recent one now, this is the other day, this is yesterday the 13th, it just shows that he has absolutely no intention of trying to improve his life in any way. And, and something that I didn't actually know beforehand, the actor John Boo Yeager that was in Star Wars and also attacked the block I think as well. He was actually one of the last people to ever see Damalola Taylor alive. It's such a sad story and I can't actually think or imagine what it must be like to lose a 10 year old child in such tragic ways as well. And because I haven't seen any autopsy reports, I can't comment on anything like that. So you just have to sort of rely on, on what the experts have said in this situation. But I really want to hear what people have to say about the recent charges that Richard Preddy has got for running over a police officer. And also, please pay your respects to Damalola Taylor as well. I really appreciate you joining me tonight. We'll be back again very soon with some more music and street news. Thank you. Peace.